I can't stand how dumb some people are. Oh, look how fit he is. Oh, he's so fit. His heart rate's in the 150s. It's so cool. He's in the 150s. I can't believe it. Yo, today's episode is brought to you by Sarah Hiller, who's my sister, who got me this, my zone, the chest war and heart rate monitor strap, and it is accurate up to 99.4%. Why is this important? Because I have had some issues with the whoop, and I'm putting, I have it on, it's on right now. Why is it on? It's on because I wanted to test it against the 99.4% accuracy that is the MyZone heart rate monitor. And I also have on the Apple Watch. So you know what I did? I put all three on at the same freaking time and I did some workouts. I did two workouts. I did two workouts for a reason. I have an issue with things being misleading. I have an issue with people not being as smart as they should be. I have people looking at something and taking it for face value and not knowing a deeper underlying issue behind that thing that they're looking at at the surface level. The whoop is the king of things. People looking at it at the surface level, not knowing what's going on and just saying, oh my God, something or another because something or another and it drives me fucking crazy. This stems a lot from, okay, here we go again, a CrossFit Mayhem video. Of course, there's a CrossFit Mayhem video. And I was watching Rich Froning do 22.1. It's that giant AMRAP with the box jump overs, the dumbbell snatches, and the wall walk. During that workout, he has a heart rate of like 150. It never really goes over 150. And every single person who watches the video is like, oh, he's so fit. He's so fit. That's such a low heart rate. My heart rate would be like 200. It'd be like 400. It's not possible to have that, but they'd say it's like 400. And yeah, they're trying to say it'd be really high. And you're watching Froning and you go, yes, he's the fittest man on earth. I'm not trying to discredit him from that. He's super fucking fit. But his heart rate is not sitting at 150. He would probably be the first to admit to you that it's not at 150. There are at least 50 comments in the comment section saying, oh, look look how low his heart rate is. It's so low. It's incredible how low it is. It's not that low. It's that the Whoop 4.0 sucks. It's terrible. I made a video on how bad the Whoop 4.0 is. Reasons why the Whoop 4.0 sucks is because they had it for, I've had this thing for four years, right? And I recently took it off, won't put it back on. Over the course of the first three years, I had three different Whoops. I had the original Whoop, I had the 2.0, I had the 3.0. Each of those, I got to know myself. I would be doing a workout, I'd get a similar reading. I'd be like, all right, I feel like I'm about 170. I look at the Whoop, it's a 172. Cut and dry. I would have a good night's sleep. Resting heart rate would be 39 or 40 beats per minute. I had a bad night's sleep, it was in the low, the middle 40s, like 145, 146. Along comes the Whoop 4.0. I would do a workout. I'd be like, oh, wow. I was probably pushing 176, 178 on that workout. Lo and behold, the Whoop says I was at 158. Like, okay, that's a little weird. And then my sleep metrics were all off. I'd have a really good night's sleep. I'd wake up. 51 beats per minute. I'm like, all right, my HRV is really low too. And it started to give me like this weird issue where I thought things were good, things were bad. And I'm like, okay, either I'm really good at working out now is my heart rate staying so low or I have cancer or something. My sleep is all of a sudden worse than it's ever been in the past three years. No alcohol, no drugs, no nothing. And everything is just all out of whack. And it was only thing that changed was that they changed either the algorithm or they made the whoop smaller. They put new sensors on it. I don't know, but the whole thing is all out of whack and it drove me insane. And I would watch videos like the Rich Froning Mayhem video and you would see that his heart rate was sitting under 150 during an open workout where he's going as hard as he freaking can. And everyone in the comments section is like, oh, it's so great. Oh my God, look at him go. It's like, good job, Froning. Very good score. Very impressive. But the whoop thing is totally out of control. So I've been wearing this thing for a while. The Apple Watch just because you start it, you can look at it, it says the heart rate, and it would align with the three previous years of whoop data that I would get. The whoop data that I don't get anymore from wearing the whoop 4.0. The thing that is pumped to every single CrossFitter in the space, buy the whoop, buy the whoop, pay your affiliation fee, sign up for CrossFit, pay the open, pay the quarterfinal, and yeah, buy a whoop, buy a whoop, buy a whoop, buy Noble. You make sure you sign up for whoop. The 22.2 announcement is sponsored by Monster Hydro, the official energy drink of the Noble CrossFit Games. Whoop, the official wearable of CrossFit, and Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. And it drives me insane saying that people are all about it and they don't know anything. They look at its surface level and don't look any deeper. So you know what I did? I took the thing that my sister got me and I wore all three of them and I did a couple of tests. The first test I did was on the assault bike. The test that I did looked like this. I did three sets of one minute of work and one minute of rest. Did it all at 70 RPMs. 
I took a reading at the end of the first interval, the second interval, and the third interval. I also took a reading at 30 seconds after the break. You can test your fitness really well by seeing how well you recover during your rest intervals. So that's why I wanted to take a um, reading at the 30 second mark. It's how I do a lot of my training. So I would see how high it got right at the end of that interval at 70 RPM, and I would take one 30 seconds after to see how quick it was going. And then I would try to see the correlation between the three monitors that I was wearing at the time. After those first three intervals of one on one off, I did three more intervals of two on and two off. So I would take a reading at the top of the two minute after going 70 RPM, and then I would take one one minute after, halfway through my rest interval. I did that for three rounds. I took readings and I saw how they correlated amongst those. What I was seeing was that the my zone, the 99.4% accurate my zone lined up extremely well. If I felt like I was at 160, it was around 160. If I felt like it was at 170, I was around 170. Every single time I looked at the thing, it seemed to be extremely accurate. Looked at the Apple watch. The Apple watch was pretty close. I would say it was always within two or 3% high or low, but it was pretty freaking close. Do a little bit of research on the stuff and you'll see that the optical sensors on these things with all these lights that are under there, it's knowing that they aren't all that accurate. And the reason I did it on the assault bike is because I can control my effort. If I did it every single one at 70 RPMs, I knew that there wasn't any sort of play in the scientific formula. And I knew I'd be getting about as accurate a reading as I could get. Then you look at the whoop. Right off the bat, the whoop was off par with the other two. I was in the 150s with both the My Zone and the Apple Watch, and the whoop was in the 130s. It was way out of whack. And then it tended to sit a little bit low in comparison to the other two intervals on that first one minute. Moving on over into the two minute intervals, it started to play a little bit of catch up. On the two minute intervals, you would almost see not a huge difference between the My Zone being super accurate and the Apple Watch and the Whoop. It wasn't very different. What you did see was a huge difference when it came to the recovery intervals. On the recovery intervals, it would almost look like the Whoop was just lagging behind. It wasn't keeping up. The Apple Watch and the My Zone, you would see that they would go all the way down to 130, and sometimes the Whoop would be sitting in the 150s still. At the completion of the three one ones and the three two twos, I did a checkpoint at two minutes after and three minutes after. That was just to see where it was at. At the two minute mark, every single monitor read 119. I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. That means that they're all working right there. And then I took one at the three minute mark and the My Zone and the Apple Watch were about 105. Whoop was sitting at 85 beats per minute which was 20 beats off. That's 20% difference. That's a huge difference. And what I noticed over the course of the assault bike workouts is that the whoop was high, low, very far off, way farther off than the Apple Watch and nowhere near how I was feeling, which was aligning with the my zone. The my zone is exactly how I was feeling and it lined up perfectly. But then you look at the whoop and it was high, low, and it's a huge issue when this is basically all it has to do. It has to take your heart rate, it has to tell you where you're at. And a lot of people should be using these metrics to get better with their training. I would say that it's a huge freaking issue that the whoop is as bad as it is. How are you going to have a recovery score? I experienced this first time on a rower. I was like, all right, whoop 4.0 is not really working the way it should work. You look at the froning video. That doesn't look right. That Why is he at 150 the whole time? He's sitting on the floor at the end of the workout and he's dying he should at least hit 165 workout it is that's all it is wall walk and dumbbell cycling dude nice man 170, 175, 180. Usually the fitter you are, the higher your heart rate gets. Work out at a higher heart rate relative to everybody else because you're fitter. It doesn't just stay lower, cut and dry. That's not always how it works. Sometimes it's higher and you just function better while it's higher. But then something hit me. On that workout, he's playing around with the dumbbell. He's doing dumbbell snatches. His arms are moving up and down. He's doing the wall walks. His wrists are under pressure. On these optical sensors, that comes into play a lot. On the assault bike, that comes into play a lot. So when you're pushing on the handles, there's tension in your wrist there. And when there's tension in your wrist, it's messing up the sensor. Now this sucks because most of the things that you do in CrossFit involves your wrist moving around. You're hanging onto a pull-up bar, you're doing cleans, you're doing burpees, you're swinging your arms around, you're skiing. Everything really involves your arms moving to some extent or degree. It's interesting that the Apple Watch doesn't give me the same issues. The Whoop gives me huge issues. The Whoop also doesn't happen to work when I'm sleeping, but that's a different story. We're just talking working out here. So Froning, he's doing that workout and the readings are all off. I'm on the assault bike. Their readings are all off in comparison to the strap on my chest. So I did another one. I did another one and I started running on the treadmill. Mill. I did the exact same thing. I had three one ones and three two twos. I took a reading at the two minute and the three minute after mark. And I recorded the whole thing. It's going to look super cool. Not as cool as Froning because I don't have a cool guy putting my videos together. It's just me in my garage. But I tried to do the best that I could. I'm going to talk you through it. I cut it up so it's real quick. You don't have to watch me work out for an hour. But let's go. So unfortunately for you guys, I'm not going to cut this up. It's going to be one straight shot all the way through. So here I 
am. I'm on my treadmill in the middle of the screen. You can see the whoop out of that cool little feature that they've got where you can live broadcast something. On the right, I've got the MyZone app. I have it all synced up so that you can see what's going on on the MyZone app. You can see that the colors change as you hit different zones. That's the MyZone series of it. You can see that the whoop is already behind right here. The whoop is behind by, I don't know, 5 10%. It tries to play catch up at one point, I believe. But you will also see that I don't have the Apple Watch because Apple Watch doesn't have anything usable to broadcast a heart rate. So I will plug in the Apple heart rate data as it is necessarily required at the one minute marks and at the 30 second after marks. But you can see, whoop, cut up here, 137 to 137, 139 to 136. I'm in the green on the MyZone app. That's zone number three. And the whoop's doing a pretty good job so far while we're running. Much better than when we were on the assault bike earlier. So here's our first reading at the end of the minute. Zone 149, 148, 150. That's pretty good. I zipped through it so you don't have to watch me work out forever. You can see the heart rate kind of quick. Here's at the 30 second mark. The whoop's lagging behind a little bit. So that's not a good sign. Cruising through. Here we go. Before we start up the interval. At the start of the interval, you can see that there's a 30 BPM difference between the strap on my heart and the whoop, which is at 132. That's not good. That's a 30% difference. 30% is not a good look for something that's designed to just measure your heart rate. Here we go, another reading, my zone 158. Both of the wrist worn devices are behind. And we're gonna zip ahead so that we can get to the 30 second mark. At the 30 second mark after, you can see that all pretty close. My zone, everything's lagging behind. That could be a Bluetooth issue. And I don't really know too much about that. But there is a 17 BPM difference at the start of the interval again. So whoop again, lagging behind. I don't have those metrics on the Apple Watch, but I do know that the whoop was lagging behind at the start of the intervals for a handful of these. Here we go. At the end of the interval, my zone is higher. Apple Watch is close. Whoop is down by about 10%. Not quite 10%, more like 7% at the 30 second after mark. Whoop is low, really low compared to my zone. Apple Watch is kind of close. I believe that this is going to be the last interval, only six BPM behind for the whoop this time. So it's playing a little bit of catch up. Maybe you found out that we were running because you know, the whoop learns from you, right? Oh, the whoop learns from you. It needs a week to pick up on learning from you. Oh, it's so intelligent. Little thing on your wrist, Bluetooth. Eh. So this is a two minute interval. You can see that I get up into the red according to the my zone. Hit 177, 176. So my zone at the end of the interval was at 176. So is the Whoop, so is the Apple Watch. That's pretty cool. Longer interval, maybe it needed a little bit of a longer interval in order for everything to regulate and catch up with one another. Here is the first take at the one minute mark of the rest. Mizo 138, Whoop 142, Apple 140, all pretty close. I don't really know how to feel about it being off by four beats and Whoop being off by more than the Apple Watch every single time on a running piece. Why do I have the running piece? I will show you at the end of this, but there's a throwing workout where he's doing a running video. He gets up to 175, which is way higher than he got during that open workout. So I felt like a running video where my wrist is free of movement would have been a good idea. Here's the end of uh, round number two on the two minutes, 78, 76, 77. So again, those are all relatively close. Who really knows? It doesn't really matter if there's too big of a difference there. If you're looking for a max heart rate, you should probably have the chest strap on anyway because you know that there's gonna be a little bit of variance in these and it's the big variances that are gonna make a big difference, like off by 30 beats per minute on a round or two. One minute recovery, my zone 144, whoop is off by a lot, Apple was spot on at 144 as well. So there's another check towards the whoop, not looking so hot, just standing around, took my pants off, it got really hot. So I don't know what I was thinking, run around pants, it was snowing earlier today, so we're wearing pants, that's what I was thinking. Here we go, last interval, two minutes of running. I did all of these at 1100 watts, by the way, 11, 1150. So I told you 70 RPM on the 70 on the bike because you were trying to keep it the same every single round. So it was 1100 every single round on here. You get a similar. Here's a bunch of 178, 179s. Zipping through this one, writing the numbers down. See the heart rate coming down on the yellow. It's all super duper cool. At the one minute check mark, here's what we got. 146, 150, 146. So whoop again is off. I don't like that Whoop is off. It's not a good look for Whoop at any single one of these. And it seems like the Apple Watch is more closely correlated to the MyZone on more intervals than the Whoop is. Here's our last one. Nope, this is our second to last one. Where they're all relatively close, which is pretty cool. 124. And if I recall, this is the last one, and they're all also relatively close. 
whoop, my zone. Oh, 1,113, that's not right. But yeah, they're all 113, which is good. So I thought that was pretty cool. You can see the ups and the downs, and I hope that speeding it up didn't really ruin the ups and the downs of the heart rate for you guys. But what was more important was how high it got, where it was at those certain recovery points, the 30 second, the one minute mark after within those intervals, and seeing how they all reacted in relation to one another. Here's my little chart, the little chart that shows you everything. And I have the averages of the interval. So there was only three of them. Sure, it would be more accurate if I did like 10 of them. Three intervals was plenty. So with these three intervals, the averages, eh, and it's not really all that important, the averages. What's important is the particular times you would need those readings. So when you're doing the workouts and you want to know what your heart rate is, when you need to see your heart rate, and the whoops telling you something that's 30 beats off, that's terrible. That's no good. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If the whoop is, I don't know, off by four on those one minute averages, or it's off by one on the averages of the two minutes. So you will notice that the my zone and the apple, they're pretty close. They're pretty freaking similar. But what you're going to see is that the whoop is off. The whoops one beat high on the two minute ones, and it's four beats low, where the Apple Watch is only two beats low. So it's more accurate, according to this little test, on the running intervals. If we pull up the biking intervals, you'll see again that my zone and Apple are off by a couple of points on the one minute intervals, and it's closer on the two minute intervals, while the whoop is still far off. It's more percentage points away. I don't know how many percentage points, but they're quite a few percentage points off on the one minute intervals. The two minute intervals, it seems to close the gap a little bit, but again, it's not so much about the averages, although it is clear that the my zone is closer to the Apple Watch. What's more important is what it says when you're doing your actual workout. So again, the entire point of this entire test and the entire point of me doing this and telling you about this stuff is because I can't stand how dumb some people are. Oh, look how fit he is. Oh, he's so fit. His heart rate's in the 150s. It's so cool. He's in the 150s. I can't believe it. It's like, yeah, he's fit, but he's not in the 150s. It's because this thing can't operate during a CrossFit workout which is weird because it's where it was born and raised from in the CrossFit world for the most part. Yeah, it's in golf now, but the Whoop was born and raised here. Now it can't even function doing a CrossFit workout because they tried to sell out and make everything as cheap as possible. The Apple Watch, which can do everything under the sun, gives you a better reading than the thing that was born to make everybody know exactly how they were recovering because this is the sport of recovery, right? And now it can't even do that right. So again, thanks, Sarah, for my heart rate monitor. I hope that you guys can see that there's a little bit more to this than just looking at something at surface level and saying, yeah, that guy's the fittest man on earth. So I have to believe that his heart rate sitting at 150. Understand that it's very possible that he just operates better at a higher heart rate and the whoop sucks and the whoop isn't going to tell you those things. Do I have a little bit of bias on this? Sure. But within my bias, here is some evidence. Look at the whole video. You see in the whole video that everything is off. As soon as my elbow works, I'll do a mixed modal test. I'll do some stuff with some kettlebell spin some box jumps, some clean, some burpees, a lot of crap. I'll do another one of these where I'm wearing all three of them and I'm doing CrossFit. These weren't CrossFit, but you know what? Andrew can't do CrossFit right now because my elbow doesn't work. So when my elbow works, I'll do a more fun version of this. You can expect that. Follow the channel so you can see it. Andrew Hiller, out.